For me, the main reason to care, and the reason I care, is that women need to have the tools to invent the future. In fact, if we're going to have a future, women have to have those tools. Of course, myself, I um, had no role model when I started, and I, um, I'm not sure I missed a role model. Um, but then, when I, I remember coming first as a guest professor to Vienna in the university, and there were girls sitting in the first row and just staring at me. Yeah? <laughs> so um, uh, it was actually the first time that I understood that there is a need of, um, for women to see other women normally acting in leading professions. Yeah? Just as if it, it is a routine action and they have never seen it before. I think there is uh, a threefold rationale behind the problem. And uh, first is uh, we, we need to address uh, gender equality. That's the first. Because it doesn't make any sense to ask, uh, to ask for quotas if we can't, can't supply. So we need to start earlier. Secondly, uh, we have a demographic, uh, demographic problem uh, that uh, we have uh, human resources constraints in, uh, in technology. And the third one is employability. The employability obviously is better in, uh, in um, uh, technological areas than in others. In the 70s, 80s, when uh, people were uh, complaining that there are not enough women uh, out there in science or in leadership positions, then it was argued, you know, we have changed our educational systems and more women are coming and they are in the pipeline and you will see in 10 or 20 years, we, we, we will see all of them in the leading positions and we will see all of them in the STEM fields. Uh, and it didn't happen. So uh, the, the pipeline somehow was leaky um, because they, they somehow opted or dropped out and the question was, was why, why is that happening? We try to have an inflow of female students which we are, we are not so successful, I have to, to state. Uh, we try to keep them in not having this, this leaky pipeline and then we want to promote them where we have specific activities for uh, assistant professorships, for uh, tenure track positions, where we have for study assistants and even we have some things for master students. Well, I'm generally not a friend of quota systems, but um, it could help in a transition period this is nothing that has to last forever, but in a transition period, it, quota systems could help. The um, answer is simple, I'm against quotas. To create conditions that attract women and that keep women at the university and that are conducive for women to develop their skills yeah? and their, their scientific outlook. And the main reason why I am against quota is um, that in science, uh, in scientific work, um, you need passion of your own. So you can't enforce passion by quota. No woman ever became senior scientist, associate scientist, or full professor because of a quota in Austria. Women become professors or female scientists because of their achievements, right? And we have quotas, but quotas for decision-making bodies that govern university policies. First of all, it's not rocket science. It's really common sense. So um, in the 90s at my university, about 8% of the computer science students were female. Um, okay. How did things change? Did we change our curriculum? No, we did not change our curriculum. But we had a dean, Raj Reddy, he was one of the people who put Carnegie Mellon on the map. And Raj said to the missions office, I want you to select students who are good in math and science, you need that, but who have a lot of interest because they have to really invent the future. Once he said that, it opened the doors to uh, our school admitting a diverse group of students, men who had a large interest, not just looking at the computer and programming, and it opened the doors for women who were smart in math and science and could do it, and that started to change um, what, our student body. We have big sister, little sister programs where you have a mentor built in. 
we have, uh, we invite uh, speakers, role models, people to speak. We, our students have a lot of opportunities for um, leadership opportunities and so forth. One could use the practical lab work starting from the first semester for forming uh, communication skills, team working skills, uh, feedback um, uh, community. Universities are not only producers of human, of, of human resources. I think we are producing research results and this is, I think, what outmost needs industry. I think this is something what the technical university can supply. And this is all the reason that we need a, more, a higher female percentage in our study and in the teachers and the students because I think they are different and the same, but they can contribute with some new ideas. And I think this is the essence we are, we are really trying to make this higher percentage of female participation. Many of the studies that show these differences are done in a very biased sample. So when you have 8% women in a sample you are, whose experiences aren't the same and they're really not very good experiences, you are going to get very different outcomes. But when you have a more balanced environment, we are not seeing those differences at all. And we've done this study now, I think, about eight times since 1999. We started with uh, fix the women, right? Train them more, uh, improve them, give them more support because they need it. And, and today we are discussing fix the institutions. So we don't, we don't have to support women, we have to support the institutions to understand what talent they are missing out. It's all about knowledge and capabilities, and that's it. And that should be basically the, uh, the criteria for, for decision.